start to get too thick, there's a few things that you can use. A colorless blender, rubber cement thinner, or what you see me using here, which is rubbing alcohol, something you all have at home. I'm just taking a Q-tip and using a little bit of rubbing alcohol to kind of work over top of this. It will start to blend some of these areas a little bit, and it will also thin things down. So once that is completely dry, I can come in and actually add a little bit more detail over this hair when I'm ready to do that. I'm also doing this a little bit in the eye. You do want to make sure that it's dry, which is one of the benefits to purchasing a colorless blender or using rubber cement thinner. But r rubbing alcohol works just, as fi just fine. You just have to wait for it to dry to be able to draw back over top of it. And it actually doesn't take very long. So now you can see I'm kind of working on, while that's drying, I'm working on adding in my lights and darks in these other areas. And I'm starting to work on her face, which I see a lot more detail on. On this side of the face, it's not as obvious as it is maybe through the middle. So right now, you can see I'm adding in the lights and darks, and I'm looking for the main shapes that I see. But as I get more towards the middle, I'll spend more time really looking at and trying to perfect that detail because that's what is closest to me and what will stand out the most. Now I'm working back in to the hair a little bit because that's dried. And I can start to add a little bit more detail that I see up there. I'm going to kind of work back and forth and start to add in a little bit more of the detail that I see here. I'm looking for little shapes. I'm adding in the whites because this is yarn that she's made out of. There's form to each individual strand of yarn. Now on the side of her, of her face, it's not going to be as obvious as it will be for the strands and the detail and texture in the middle of her face. It's still important to make sure I get those lights and darks right. I'm adding a little bit more of the rubbing alcohol and building up constantly working on building up. You can see I even used a little bit of green there. Building in, laying in these darks. Working back in some of my white. A little bit of yellow. And slowly kind of working back and forth. Some browns. And it's important to keep adding in your whites and your darks and layering. This color of yarn is actually really rich with this really bright kind of shiny color. So to really show shines, we need to make sure that we bring in whites, but also that it's going to kind of take on colors from around you. So bringing in greens and reds and purples and blues are going to be important to kind of show that shiny, kind of almost like metallic look. So I'm mean, Continuously kind of working back and forth on the hair, coming back into the eye a little bit. I'm starting to work on her nose. And it looks kind of darker towards the bottom, so very carefully with really short, neat strokes, I kind of laid in some of those darker values and built up over top of them. And slowly, with that very fine tip point, and by building up these colors, it's going to look really rich. 
I can see a little bit of dark between each row of yarn. And then there's a little bit of dark at the top. And it's important to pay attention to that so that you're getting this rounded look. Bring in more white where the light hits and emphasizing with a little bit more dark. And I'll still come back to this and work on it a little bit more. It's not completely finished, but it's kind of something that you kind of continuously kind of work back and forth on. <laughs> 